Vietnam, 1968. In this conflict, from 1962 to 1972, 424 Australians were killed and 2,369 injured. It was a tragedy of unparalleled proportions that every thinking person would hope will never occur ever again. But in Australia today, there is a far greater tragedy occurring every day of the year. And it happens right here in places like this. The number of people killed and injured in work-related accidents in just one year throughout Australia exceeds the total number killed and injured during the whole 10 years of Vietnam. In this war, one of the most frightening aspects was not knowing where and when an attack would come. There was no clearly defined battlefront. But here on the workshop floor, the danger areas are obvious. So you would think that with a little common sense, death or injury could be avoided. Like Vietnam, statistics show that the majority of deaths and injuries happen to young people. I suppose you could say this 20-year-old was lucky. He wasn't killed. He's suffering a lot of pain and will be in hospital for a month or so, and more than likely will have facial scars for the rest of his life. Apart from his personal suffering, the real cost of this single avoidable accident in monetary terms is staggering. We'll sit you up in a moment. We'll give you a little bit of oxygen and it'll make you feel a little bit brighter. Vietnam helicopters were invaluable for moving troops from one place to another. During the whole conflict, there was never ever a report of anybody accidentally falling out of a helicopter. And yet, one of the significant causes of industrial accidents results from falls off low scaffolds. Because the first landing on a scaffold is usually only a metre or so above ground, we're all inclined to think it doesn't need guardrails. A fall backwards with your head hitting one of these lumps of iron will kill you from a two metre fall just as easily as a 102 metre fall. In any dangerous situation, it's only natural to get as much protection as you can. Trenches or just depressions in the terrain provide a fair degree of safety. But there's not much safety in this trench. Lack of shoring, no ladder, and the excavator working too close, all combine to provide a sure recipe for disaster. In war, all types of dangerous gas and fumes are expected. If you're lucky, you can avoid them or take proper precautions, like wearing a gas mask. But in a controlled situation, such as on this job, you'd expect a totally safe atmosphere. An extraction fan should remove all the dangerous fumes from the welding operation. That is, if it's powerful enough and is close to the work area. He's probably unaware that the fume extractor isn't doing much good at that distance. A half hour of inhaling all those fumes will be more than enough to make him lose consciousness. In enclosed situations like this, there's really only one way to be totally safe from fume inhalation. Fully self-contained breathing apparatus. If you don't have any at your workplace, have a word with the boss. If he's got any sense, he'll soon get some. 
It's in his interest as well as yours. Firing a gun like this every few seconds demands a very precise and controlled procedure. And nobody but a fool would ever stand near the open muzzle, for example, if there was a shell in the breech. But there are plenty of fools who do this sort of thing every day. Fighting in Vietnam was no place for fooling around. If you started playing games in places like this, you were dead. Back in the workplace, fooling around is one of the major causes of accidents. Two thousand six hundred and thirty nine were injured during those ten years. And around two hundred thousand were injured in the workplace in Australia in just one year. Why do we allow this to happen? Statistics show that a significantly high proportion of all accidents are caused by our own personal attitude. Let's look at some examples. Familiarity breeds contempt. An old but very true statement. Think about what you're doing. Fatigue brings about loss of concentration with the inevitable result. Ah! Fooling about is obviously deadly. Reluctance or just plain laziness in regard to wearing the proper protective clothing and safety glasses. The she'll be right mate attitude when taking shortcuts to save a bit of time. The daydreamer type. All he's thinking about is what he's hoping to do tonight. Worry, tension, stress can all contribute to a total lapse in concentration on the job in hand. Mr. Mate, I might go downstairs for a while. I'm not feeling too good, sir. Yeah, okay, Joe. Ah! These are just a few examples of attitude on the job, and they're all true. Substandard or faulty equipment contributes to around 25% of our accident statistics. So now let's have a look at a few typical problem areas. This situation is fairly typical of bad housekeeping. The person working near this electric welding is in danger of getting arc flash. The solution is pretty simple. Portable screens around the area eliminate the problem. There's just no excuse for leads and connections to be in this sort of condition. 240 volts can kill pretty effectively. Some people might think that the safety guard on this saw is not necessary. Ah! A workshop like this is a sure recipe for disaster. There is just not sufficient room to work safely. This is more like it. Space around the machinery enables everyone to work in a much safer and more efficient place. There were no clear safe spaces in Vietnam. Every step was fraught with danger. Landmines, booby traps, ambush. Your next step could be your last. And yet, people are being killed and injured here in the Australian workplace at a far greater rate than ever happened in Vietnam. Why? Boredom. You get sick of doing the same jobs all the time. Building sites, just one of those hazardous things. I really wouldn't know. Carelessness in the workshop or possibly faulty equipment and uh, not paying attention to their work. They're just rushing straight into things without thinking about what they're doing. I believe it's to do with each individual's attitude. 
to the workplace and to their own safety. If you don't have an injury for a certain time, people get a bit lazy and that's when it starts to happen. If people were to follow their safe work practices more, instead of doing a job sloppily, which that causes a, a lot of these accidents in the workforce. Uh, a lot of people aren't showing the proper way to do their jobs in the first place, so it goes back to the management. Nine times out of ten, it all comes down to common sense. That's what I think personally. I know myself that, you know, sometimes I'll leave treacherous planks lying around with nails sticking out on them, which I shouldn't really do, you know. And... Probably one word could sum up our attitude to industrial accidents, and that is attitude. Have a think about it.